So, UFC Singapore is done. It's in the books and I have to say it was a pretty good card overall considering I had completely forgotten about it. It went under the radar for a lot of people and outside of the main event there wasn't really much talk of anything else really except for maybe the light heavyweight fight with Ovin St. Pru and Tyson Pedro. But we'll get to all that now in a second. But um, yeah, pretty, pr- pretty, pretty good night of fights and the prelim action was, was pretty good and have to say the pacing was was great i mean when you're so used to watching ufc cards they tend to drag out and drag out and drag out but this is on ufc fight pass so they can just pretty much go straight through straight through straight through no messing around no filler it was actually very refreshing i have to say from a ufc kind of uh, point of view but uh, it was it was really good i have to say standout performances i'm just looking at my phone here for the results so i can get the exact times uh, Shane Young, phenomenal, phenomenal uh, uh, performance a- a- against Rolando Dai. Oh, just beautiful striking, crisp, and oof, to finish it with just a brutal barrage of punches in the second round. Really, really good showing from the New Zealander. And it was interesting, actually, his post-fight interview when he he's a, he's a Maori by native and was basically giving us all like a language lesson in how to speak Mary. It was it was quite interesting. It was it was a fun fight. Seems like an interesting guy to, to keep an eye on and I'd highly recommend if you haven't seen the fight, go go back and watch it. It was really really beautiful display of boxing and just phenomenal finish as well. But the the finishes didn't really stop from there. I mean uh Song Yedong, who is tipped to be a real contender. Um he blasted through Felipe Arantes in his fight and Arantes very disappointing just didn't seem to want to even be there looked like he wanted to be anywhere else but inside the octagon at that moment in time and he got nailed with one of the most vicious elbows I think I've ever seen uh, in, inside the octagon in, in quite a time uh, it was a break uh, off a clinch right at the death of the second round four minutes 59 seconds I do believe it was and uh, Yadong had him wrapped up and once separation clicked in he just landed a bomb and just floored around it who had no comeback and referee had no uh, <laughs> he just no, had no choice but to stop the fight it was it was a really good showing really good performance and he's definitely talked about as a real, real contender, um, no future contender anyway. You know he's still relatively young in his UFC career, but it was a really, really good showing. Disappointing for Arantis, as I say, didn't want to be there and could have really given up at any given time. And he'll be disappointed with that, and he'll have to have a good look at himself now to see who he who he fights next or see where he goes from here because it just wasn't wasn't a good look for him at all. Now I have to say, um, final prelim of the night was. Great. I mean, Pedro Yan, if you're a follower of ACB, um, the Absolute Championship uh, from Burkett, oh, just phenomenal, phenomenal debut. I mean, if you've never seen this guy fight before, you're in for a treat in the UFC because he's just a vicious, calculated striker. He um, he fought uh, Teruto Ishihara, who himself is, is a top, top level fighter too in that division, and he just got sparked big time um he was down on the ground once uh tried to recover tried to grab a single leg for himself tried to retaliate with it with a barrage of punches by himself just just couldn't just couldn't recover fully enough and he ate a huge sweeping left hook that just dropped him and yeah Jan is who has big noise coming behind him he was making he's gonna make a real push in the UFC now he, he was he looked really good looked sharp composed and no octagon jitters whatsoever and he looked just phenomenal in his fight and uh yeah definitely want to keep an eye on a lot of a lot of prospects coming uh out of this card so definitely worth checking out the, the these guys who, who really look like they could really make waves in the UFC um as for the main card um Li Jing uh, Li Jingliang opened up his uh, opened up the card even should I say against Daishi Abe who just looked completely out of his depth <laughs> for the entire 15 minutes that he was in there uh, Jing Liang was just nailing him with, with with leg kicks just battered, bruised he did everything he could to just really just destroy Abe's lead leg kick 
on his, on his lead leg, which he did over and over and over again. Inside kicks, outside kicks. It was just a phenomenal range of, of leg kicking. And a really, really different kind of approach to the fight that I've ever seen Jing, uh, Jing Liang, who lost his, his last fight against Jake Matthews, who also fought on the card with a really impressive uh, submission win of his own earlier in the night. But Jing Liang looked really just just focused. He looked like a new a new dangerous streak in him, and he really showed in his performance. And he won that fight pretty handily with a unanimous uh, unanimous decision. And um, yeah, he he just looked really really good. Um, as for the next fight, it was actually one of my I kind of tipped it myself as a as a fight at night candidate. Um, between Jessica I and Jessica Rose Clark. Now, it didn't pan out that way. It was not exactly amazing by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it was actually Jessica's, Jessica I's uh, first in the flyweight. And I have to say, she looked a lot better uh, in her, in her, in, at 125 than she has ever done at bantamweight. Obviously, she had a four-fight skid um, at 135. And the most interesting thing, really, about, about the performance was actually her post-fight interview. When she just went off on Dana White and matchmaker Sean Shelby, who just she basically kind of said that you know you made me fight, or you you made me fight at one thirty five when I'm not a one thirty five er, criticizing me for not looking good and not looking big enough for one thirty five. Essentially, just taking all the <laughs> all her losses and blaming them all on Dana White and uh and Sean Shelby, which was crazy. It was just. A really bizarre post-fight speech. If you can check it out on YouTube or check it out on the UFC Twitter channel, it'll be up there. It was just bizarre. I mean, no one is forcing Jessica I to fight at 135. At least I don't think so. I hope not. You know, obviously the flyweight division is a very new division in the UFC. So it'd be nice for her to make waves there if she believes that's where she's more comfortable. But it was just crazy for her to to. to go off like that it was just I couldn't believe what I was hearing um if, if that was the case she probably could have gone down to Invicta who obviously are a, a feeder promotion all women's MMA promotion uh she could have easily gone down there and tried her hand at flyweight boost up a record and then come back when the flyweight division was properly formed but it was just bizarre I have to say and it was just 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 odd but it wasn't a great fight it was a it was a good win for her she needed the win badly Jessica Rose Clark would be disappointed in her showing. It was tight enough without ever being amazing. Um, but definitely a lot to learn for both fighters. It was, you know, an interesting watch for, say, a, an analytical point of view. But at the time, instantly forgettable. But, you know, it is what it is. So as for the co-main event, big light heavyweight action. Number 11, I think Tyson Pedro was coming in in the rankings against number 7, uh, Ovin St. Pru. And I have to say, there was a lot of talk about Tyson Pedro going to come in and completely floor um, Ovin St. Pru. Obviously, St. Pru has been up and down, really, in, in, in his last few fights. Had a bad loss to Ilya, to Ilya Latifi earlier on this year. But boy, did he really make up for it in this fight. It was a crazy back and forth uh, war while it lasted. Both fighters landing exchanges. And, I mean, Ovin St. Pru just has crazy clinch game he's so strong in the clinch game tied up Pedro nullified anything that Pedro had going for him got down to the canvas and just sunk in a beautiful he, it looked like he was going for a Von Flew choke and we all know Ovin St. Pru has an incredible display of the Von Flew choke it, it just comes so natural to him it's, it's insane but he I was able to rip the arm through and just go for a straight arm bar instead he could have had multiple submission endings if he wanted it to but the arm presented itself, he just grabbed hole and he just pulled it right through and really finished Tyson Pedro in. She, like, at a time now when the light heavyweight division is kind of in flux because obviously the champion Daniel Cormier is going on to fight uh, Stipe Miocic for the heavyweight title at USC 226. It was really important for someone to really make a statement as to who could be the, the potential new contender. And if Cormier decides to vacate the light heavyweight belt, St. Prue could be it. I mean, he he's a well-known name and he's just... He he looked really impressive and I really hope that he can kind of keep this streak going because, like I say, he's been a kind of a win-a-fight-to-lose-a-fight type of fighter these days. But 
definitely some promise there and he looks like he looked he looked really sharp and I really hope that you know we see the best of him now because the light heavyweight division badly needs someone to really step up and uh, I think St. Prue could be that could be that guy as for Pedro again a lot to learn he looked good earlier on in the striking exchanges but he'll have to come away from that and just really work hard on on, on his uh, submission defense because it was sorely lacking he's obviously a big power puncher but he badly needs to really tweak those those ground games and you know but he's still relatively young and definitely definitely time for him to come back and and really and really push himself to be back in that type, maybe top 10 um but be interesting to see where he goes to goes to from here now as for the, the main event of the evening really interesting fight actually between Leon Edwards and Donald Cerrone obviously Leon Edwards came out with the unanimous decision victory 48-47 which is what I had scored um I thought Edwards won four of the five rounds it was a really interesting fight actually early on because Edwards managed to cut open Cerrone with a really deep cut just under his eye his right eye and it, it was just vicious it was just there was just blood streaming everywhere luckily it was below the eye and his uh, his vision wasn't completely impacted by it but um it was very interesting Edwards was really searching for the body kicks landed some nice head kicks um didn't really utilize his wrestling as I thought he was going to but um I mean we all know Cerrone doesn't really do that well against wrestlers and is a notorious uh, slow starter in in fights but he's been there before and as the fight went on Cerrone was looking more comfortable he was getting the timing down slightly uh in the second round especially he was able to land some nice punches and the third round he really took over Edwards kind of slowed his output a little bit and he was more comfortable to stay on the outside and pepper him with body kicks etc it was kind of his go-to uh kick that he was trying to really slow down Cerrone with and it was an interesting tactic um I think maybe he thought that even if Cerrone was to try catch a kick, he'd have enough for him on the ground if that's where if that's where the fight was was to go. But it was an interesting contest, and it's a performance that Edwards can feel really kind of happy with. Um, obviously, I think he would have liked the finish, but he wasn't exactly going hard for it. But I think really, you know, his wrestling game is is very underrated. I'm amazed he didn't really use it uh, that much. But it's a big feather in his cap to get by Cerrone, who's a huge name and has always been a huge name and has been synonymous with the UFC for for so long. And, you know, he, he's always been one of those fighters that if you beat, you know, good things can happen for you. I mean, look at Darren Till when he beat uh, Dar- uh, Cerrone last year. He, um, recently, obviously, went on to fight uh, Stephen Thompson in Liverpool and won that fight. And things are looking really well for him right now. But... Leon Edwards, uh, after the fight, you know, he was, he was humble enough in his approach and called out Jorge Masvidal, um, which would be an interesting fight. I think that would be an interesting uh, striking battle if that's where Edwards really wants to go for it. But in that, if that fight was to come to fruition, I think Edwards would win it. I think he has a better wrestling. Masvidal is he's okay on the ground. I just think uh, his, uh, his, his skills lie really in, in, in boxing um, but it was it was a really good card overall, and it's interesting to see now where Cerrone goes. He says that he's not finished. I mean, he's thirty five now. He'll still be there. The hunger is obviously still there. You know, he did allude a little bit in the in the post fight interview with Dan Hardy, saying that he felt a bit sick and wasn't really pushed as such for the fight, but was more the 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 camp, um, obviously in Jackson Wink MMA, pushing him to go in and fight. Very kind of interesting comments there. I mean, I wonder really how long Cerrone does have left in him because I don't think I, I, he'll he'll be probably be best known now f- as being a gatekeeper for the welterweight division. And you know, still a, still a good name. Uh, people still want to watch him fight. He's still quite an exciting fighter on his day, but it's definitely slowed down uh, considerably in the la- in the last few years. But it, it was a good win for Edwards, and it was a good night overall. Um, and hopefully now in two weeks time UFC 226 all stays together because there's some phenomenal cards and I'll, I'll have plenty of content up on the on the website uh, there'll be plenty there'll be a podcast obviously before uh, hopefully after that and uh, obviously live results etc on the night and uh, instant video video log for the reaction straight after so I mean thanks for watching anyway this is my first video log I've, I've done hopefully, hopefully it was okay um, 
like I say, if you want to keep up to date with the, with the content on the website, it's www.writingirish.com. The Twitter is at Writing Irish MMA, and the Facebook is www.facebook.com slash Writing Irish. And until next time, guys, I'll see you soon.